Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in the Shred Gaming Tech dot com video, we're going to investigate the impact of Intel's hyper-threading on an i9-9900K. Should you enable it, or should you disable it if you are purely gaming? And we will be focused purely on gaming here, and not applications like 3D rendering or video encoding, because universally, those applications almost always benefit with Intel's hyper-threading turned on. So instead, we are going to focus purely on games, and we're going to run modern titles with DirectX 11, DirectX 12, and also Vulkan across a myriad of different resolutions on an RTX 2080 Ti to see whether you get better performance or worse performance by disabling or enabling hyperthreading. We're going to use an i9-9900K, which is locked at 5 GHz. This particular model was sent to us uh, by Intel. It's a loaner, just so that you are aware. Some people might say, well, why not just buy an i7-9700K if you're going to disable hyperthreading? And that's actually a very good point. And most of the time, I would suggest you just save the money and pick up a 9700K if you are going the Intel route. Of course, other CPUs, such as, let's say, a 3700X, are also a very good purchase. And for those wondering, I will also be doing very similar testing with the Ryzen 3000 lineup, and that will be coming very soon on the channel. So if you've not subscribed, definitely do so. But there are some benefits of picking up the 9900K, even if you are disabling hyperthreading. The first is that you can enable it if you are doing something like, let's say, video encoding for the day. The second is you get additional cache, and the third, if you are overclocking, typically the 9900K does overclock a little better than the 9700K. Is it worth the additional funds? Well, honestly, that's down to you as, well, it's your money. For these system specifications, we are using an i9-9900K locked at 5 GHz across all of the CPU cores, and then using BIOS to enable or disable hyperthreading. And this is paired with an MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard and an RTX 2080 Ti. In the case of the RTX 2080 Ti, it is running the drivers of 436.30 and has had its power limit raised to 111%. All relevant Windows updates have also been applied, and of course the games are patched to their relevant recent versions. Let's start things out with Assassin's Creed Origins, with the settings at maximum. We have 1080p, 1440p, and 4K results, and here hyperthreading enabled or disabled is basically margin of error, but hyperthreading on is a frame per second slower at both 4K as well as 1080p, but does have a slight advantage at 1440p. Next is Batman Arkham Knight. We're focusing on 1080p testing for this particular game. It's a little older, but still scales fantastically with both CPU and GPU, which is one of the reasons that I'm keeping it in the test suite. All of the settings are max, apart from interactive debris and fog. And here, the 9900K with hyperthreading on and off is pretty much a wash. Next up is Civilization 6. We're using AI testing, and we have the settings at low memory impact but high performance impact. 1080p, DirectX 12, and this is measuring turn time. So lower here is better, and the additional threads with hyperthreading do make a slight difference. You know I'd be including this one if you're a regular viewer of the channel, but Gears 5, definitely one of the more graphically intensive games over the past year, and Gears 5 definitely pushes the GPU. Even at 1080p, the results between hyperthreading enabled and disabled a margin of error, however consistently we find hyperthreading does make a very slight difference for this title. Another ridiculously demanding game is Metro Exodus. We are using the Ultra a quality setting with ray tracing disabled of course with DX12 and we've decided to also test at 720p because this game is so ridiculously demanding even on an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p but here at 720p the gap does uh, open up a little bit with hyper threading enabled but at 1080p the differences are essentially identical 
Another new game in our test suite, World War Z. All of the in-game settings are maxed out, and of course we are using the in-game benchmark. I've decided to include uh, results for 1440p as well as 1080p because this game isn't super demanding on the GPU. And I've also included both Domectex 11 and Vulcan results here. As a slight aside, you will notice that Vulcan absolutely demolishes the performance of DirectX 11 in this particular benchmark. And we will definitely be uh, investigating that much more with our core count and API scaling video. With hyperthreading enabled or disabled, it's almost margin of error. For example, if you look at 1080p DX11, hyperthreading loses by a couple of frames per second, but at 1440p, using Vulcan, hyperthreading wins out by a couple of frames per second. Lara's latest adventure is next at DX12, maximum quality settings. Of course, ray tracing is disabled because of the heavy performance impact on the GPU. I've decided to go all the way down to 720p testing, all the way up to 4K. Unsurprisingly, 4K, there is no difference at all uh, between hyperthreading enabled or disabled. And 1440p is essentially identical as well. Even 1080p, there's only a couple of frames per second differences. Another extremely popular game, Witcher 3, 1440p, with maximum setting. We have to do a manual run-through of this particular title, so there is a slight variance in margin of error, but you can see that hyper-threading on does slightly lose out to hyper-threading off in terms of raw averages, but minimum frames per second is a little better with hyper-threading enabled. Here we have yet another Gears of War 5 benchmark, this time it's a manual run through. Uh, this is at 1080p and you can see that the results here pretty much mirror what the game uh, achieved with the built-in benchmark. And we also have Blair Witch, another manual benchmark with all of the settings maxed out, 1080p. Here, hyperthreading enabled and disabled scored identically, but minimum performance with hyperthreading enabled as well as maximum performance with hyperthreading enabled are slightly higher. Resident Evil 2 is second to last with 1080p. We're running with DirectX 11 because it performs better with the RTX 2080 Ti. We have an average of 221.7 frames per second with hyperthreading enabled compared to 216.4 with hyperthreading disabled. So once again, that's pretty much margin of error. And now the last benchmarks, Battlefield 5, DX12, 1080p, no RTX. With hyperthreading disabled, you have a slight boost in performance. It's 165.4 compared to 160.4, so uh, 5 frames per second advantage there. And Battlefield 5 with DX11, 1080p, no RTX enabled, of course, here. And once again, hyperthreading does lose out by a couple of frames per second. Still 5 frames per second, but you can see the massive drop in performance we have with DX11 mode. So it's 126.8 compared to 121.5 of uh, hyperthreading enabled. So then, based upon the results, what's the conclusion? What, what can we say regarding hyperthreading enabled or disabled? Well, what we have to first take into consideration is the testing here is with a clean set of benchmarks. In other words, 
This is with nothing else loaded in the background. There is no Discord, there is no uh, Chrome open, there is no uh, Skype, nothing else running in the background. It is just the game. I say that because with your system, with typical usage scenarios, like let's say you've got Photoshop open or you've got like a dozen Chrome tabs open, then you might find that having the additional threads actually proves to be beneficial and you may actually get better performance. The other thing is if you have hyperthreading disabled, you can generally, not always, but you can generally squeeze a few hundred extra megahertz more out of an i9-9900K. And that's quite simply because it is higher quality bin silicon generally, but also over the 9700K, just to clarify, but also with hyperthreading disabled, it generally requires a little less power and generates less heat. So because of that, typically you can squeeze a few hundred more megahertz out of the processor. My personal opinion is that disabling hyperthreading is probably not worth it for the majority of games, particularly if you're in a GPU bound situation. If you're playing, say, Control with ray tracing enabled at 1440p, then honestly speaking, there's not going to be that much of a difference no matter what you do with the CPU. And the same thing could be said for various other games as well. Quite frequently, you are going to be GPU bound for gaming. So hyperthreading enabled or disabled is not going to make that much of a difference. With that said, though, there are some cases that hyperthreading definitely does lead to poorer performance and other games, yes, you get better performance. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and definitely check us out on social media, which of course is linked down there in the description of this very video. But for now, I'm going to let you all go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.